If you've been watching the Yammy Noob channel for a while now, you've probably seen a lot of the same types of engines on the channel. Everything from single cylinders, V-twins, B-twins, boxers, triples, inline fours, and if we've been very good boys, sometimes we get to play with the V4. It might sound like a lot of variations, but really seven different engines isn't all that much in the grand scheme of things. And no Ducatis to L-twins are not different, they're just V-twins dipped in marinara sauce. The lack of variety might leave you feeling a bit bored of the same old engine notes all the time, especially if you ride a Kawasaki Ninja 650. That engine sounds like nails being slowly driven into your ear holes. But would you believe me when I said that there's a motorcycle with a helicopter engine in it? Or what about one with the V8? There's a ton of weird one-off motorcycles or ones that have been discontinued with some truly wild engine setups, and today we're going to check them out. Now, None of the bikes we're gonna be looking at today are gonna have common engines, meaning the seven listed above because you've heard them time and time again. Instead, these are gonna be some truly special engines, and most of them are gonna be in bikes you can actually buy with your hard earned money. Just a few of them might require you to be an oil company executive to buy them, just so you know. These are in no particular order, we're just having fun today. Let's hit the ground running with that helicopter engine motorcycle. We've talked about it before, but it's the MTT Turbine Superbike, otherwise known as the Y2K. The reason I want to talk about it now though is because there have been some developments in the wild world of turbine bikes, specifically the fact that you can go out and actually buy one new now. That's right, the MTT is currently produced to the updated 420RR with the peak output power of 420 horsepower at 52,000 RPM and 500 foot-pounds of Torgos at only 2,000 RPM. It weighs in at 500 pounds wet and ready to ride, runs a mix of diesel and kerosene, and literally on the website claims a top speed of faster than you will ever dare to go, which just seems like it's tempting fate to me. They've got a few different models just in case you wanted more than one in your stable. They've got a race ready version with no lights so you can take it out on the racetrack and be slower than everyone else rolling around on boosts of course. They have the super turbine trike just in case you're a tasteless boosted boy who's sick of getting dusted up on on your highway pulls. And the best part is that you don't have to put the conversion kit on yourself so you just might be able to survive the ride. Doing some cursory research on the list here, your Papa Yams was able to find one for sale in Florida because of course I did. Uh, with all the features selling as a two-door coupe for some reason on the low, low price of $249,995. Oh, but don't worry. They have financing available, so you can pay $125 a month from now until the end of time. Take a listen to this thing. Next up is the Crichton CR700W. It's a big selling point that it has a MotoGP level power to weight ratio. How do they manage to make that work? Simple, they made a twin rotary engine, duh. Yeah, don't worry, I'm scratching my head too. Basically, the bike is cooled by a vacuum powered the exhaust, meaning less coolant. The engines are stupid simple with only three moving parts per cylinder, whatever they're called in a rotary, also driving the weight down. All of this results in a 690cc motorcycle that weighs only 285 pounds and makes 220 horsepower. Uh, to give you an idea, the Koenigsegg Jesco, which is claiming to be the first 300 mile an hour car thanks to a 5 liter twin turbo pushing 290 pounds of boost, makes less horsepower per liter. The guy who designed the bike, Brian Crichton, was a member of Norton during their run of championships in the 750cc Super Cup. Eventually it was banned because it was just too good, which basically torpedoed Norton overnight. Thankfully, Crichton managed to keep his designs and his back on track only with the CR700W. Also, before you ask, yes, I did see that Fortnite video about the rotary bikes, but I have a feeling the guys who's been making rotary race bikes has managed to make this bike work pretty dang well. But if you want one, you better act fast, like get a time machine fast, because there were only 25 hand-built motorcycles costing a meager $116,000. But hey, if you have enough money for a time machine, I'm sure you can afford the CR700W. Let's take a listen. Next up, we have to talk about the Honda NR. This was a motorcycle built back in the day when the answer to any question at the Honda offices was cocaine. Let me just describe this to you and let me know when I lose you. Okay, so this was a motorcycle originally made in 1979 with the NR500, which was a racing motorcycle, but it was bored out to 750 cc's a few years later to meet engine requirements, and they made roughly 300 road-ready bikes in 1992. It's a 90 degree V4, so far so good, liquid cooled with dual overhead cams, yep, that checks out. It's got eight valves per cylinder, wait, what? what? 
eight valves per cylinder okay because why not you see what happened is one of the engineers got loose on the factory floor and did all the coke in the communal cocaine bucket funded by the Goldwing sales and went back to his desk and designed an oval piston v4 was it faster a little the nr was putting down 125 horsepower and 48 pounds foot of torgarinamos to the jixer 750s 115 and 54 but the design docs made it past r d and for almost a decade and a half honda raced this weird contraption building the nightmare monster that haunted the dreams of their pit crews but if you wanted to buy a motorcycle with more expensive maintenance than a ducati you could buy the nr for sixty thousand dollars in 1992 which is roughly a million dollars in 2021 but it didn't hold its value all that well with auctions going for around $30,000. The moral of the story, I suppose, is that drugs are bad, okay? Anyways, let's take a listen to this oval piston beast. But let's assume you're a cruiser boy and you're in the market for a real engine to put in your real bike so it can finally be as fast as you keep claiming it is. Do you want to spend $100,000 on Screaming Eagle parts or do you want to spend $100,000, 150 cubic inch pushrod twin cam air cooled triple cylinder engine? Yep, it wasn't just Honda engineers who fancied a sky down the Colombian Alps every now and then. Some dude called Jim Fueling bought a Harley in 1974 and he thought to himself, you know what? There's just not enough freedom in this engine. Let's add another cylinder. His Harley tech turned to him and told him such things are what caused Buell to be cast from the Garden of V-Twins, I think. I'm not 100% sure if I have the timeline right. Either way, this is a crate motor that makes 180 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 200 foot-pounds of torque at 3,000 RPM because you didn't need your arms anyways, right? You'll be able to get by with nothing but bloody stumps, right? You'll just need a new frame to go with it, so I suggest it's not really a crate motor necessarily, but you can just bolt all your classic Dyna parts to the bike and experience the Dyna death wobble the way God intended. With a beer in one hand, an American flag cape, and an ear-splitting straight pipe sounds and now announcing your entrance into hell because ain't no biker going to biker boy heaven. Take a listen. Number five today is going to the Kawasaki 750cc Square 4, a motorcycle so rare they couldn't even make it. Actually, they did, but they couldn't sell it because back in 1971, this bike couldn't pass emission regulations. Just think about that for a second. This bike was so horrifically inefficient that it wasn't able to be sold in America in the early 70s. It must have been like a rolling deep water horizon running on ground up polar bears and whales. But why did Kawasaki build a motorcycle so off the wall, get it to the final production stage, and then pull production right at the finish line? Well, back in the 60s and 70s, the only thing separating one UJM from another was which bike was faster. Cowie had made a whole bunch of two-stroke UJMs with the most powerful being the Mach 3 from 1969, then Honda rocked up like the Kool-Aid man with the CB750, which became the fastest UJM out there, and it went on to be the poster child for the 70s era Japanese. Japanese motorcycles. But Cowie was not gonna have it. They decided to build two different motorcycles at the same time, hoping that one of them would be able to take back the Crow, and the first being the Mach 4, which is the legendary two-stroke 750, otherwise known as the H2, also known as the Widowmaker. It was capable of hitting 126 miles per hour in 1971. Then they made the Z1900, which is a motorcycle that didn't want to kill its riders, but the other bike secretly made in the background was the Square 4. We don't have specs on this machine since it never hit the streets and it never ran in front of a camera, but we do have sound clips of other Square 4s, so take a listen to this. Number six, and fittingly enough, it's the inline six cylinder engine. Inline sixes have been in a few bikes and are still around to this day. The first and most famous example of the inline six was the Honda CBX from 1978, which is a bike I still would love to own one day but I don't want to sink all those carburetors. A UJM with six cylinders, 1047 cc's of displacement, six carburetors, five speeds, and an absolutely face-melting 105 horsepower and 52 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, you can see why it never took off. Working on this motorcycle was basically impossible for the home mechanic, and the engine was a stressed member and needs to be dropped when you want to work on the top end. Unless you've got Jay Leno money, then you're gonna to want to give it a miss. But let's take a listen because it sounds amazing.
The next inline six that breaks my heart was the Suzuki Stratosphere, the Busa that never was. An 1100cc inline six with Superbike tech that was supposed to be a modern mix of the Katana and the Busa. We got super close to seeing this engine in the new Busa, but Suzuki wimped out and gave us the sad excuse for a Gen 3 we've got now. Like the Cowie, this one was at the finish line, but I'm expecting there's a garage at the Suzuki factory just filled with a bunch of these ready to go. But how's about another production model? The BMW K1600 GT, a mega dad bike putting down 160 horsepower and 129 foot pounds of torque. It's for nerds, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but take a listen. <laughs> Number seven goes to the almighty RC211V. For those of you who don't know, this was a 65 degree V5. Yep, because Honda cannot be normal, or at least they couldn't be for a while, and now they're overcompensating by being as milk toast as humanly possible. Here's something fun for you GP fans out there. We're gonna break down Honda's naming conventions. RC is the prefix given to all their four stroke race bikes. 211 is actually 21-1, meaning it was the first race given for the 21st century, and the V obviously stands for V. The 211 ran from 2002 to 2006, and back when Rossi was running with Honda, this was the engine he was using. It was a 990cc engine, and it made 236 horsepower. It took three titles, 48 races, and 46 poles, making it a seriously winning bike and engine combination. Like I said, you can't buy one. The closest you can get to buying one is an RC213VS clocking in at $184,000. If you're dead set on playing MotoGP Pretend, just buy a Fireblade. But all that aside, let's check out what the V5 race bike sounded like. Fact. Horizontal refreshment was a 19th century slang term for sex. Goodbye. All right, look, you don't have to lie to me. If you had time for one name new video all the way to the end, you probably have time for another one. You should probably just click this link and watch the video right over here. I promise it's gonna be good. You won't regret it. Seriously, you should just, just click it. I'm sure it's good. We only make good stuff around here. You should, you should just watch it. Why are you still here?